Hello viewers and welcome back to the book stop of Mac Truck. And today I'm going to talk about on the origin of species and other stories by Bo Young Kim, who is a South Korean author. This book is a bit of a left field pick because there are a lot of authors translated into English from South Korea. But this one was particularly, I guess, lesser known, and I found it in the science fiction section at the local bookstore. It intrigued me, so that is the one that I picked. It is a collection of short stories, and each one varies quite a bit in length, from two pages at the beginning of the book. There's a, a strange one called A Brief Reflection on Breasts, which opens the book, which was a little off-putting, actually, at first, but uh, there are also quite long ones, um, two of them being named after the, the title, On the Origin of Species, one of them's called, and then the other is, like, on the origin of species and what happened after or something like that but they're they're the same running story and together if you were to put them together they're separated by another story in the book but if you were to put those two together you'd actually have a short novella um they're pretty long and again i'll talk about that in a second and what i thought of them um so i didn't have very i didn't have a lot of expectations going into it. I didn't know what to expect. Um, Bo Young Kim, she's not well known. There's not a lot of information on her online either, um, except that she lives in South Korea and I believe was in the gaming, like video game industry and has worked in the film industry as well. So that's also a unique uh, trait for an author on my, on my list so far. It's not a perspective, a new perspective. And so, like I said, I'm going to start just talking about what's in it. Um, a Brief Reflection on, on Breasts is the first um, kind of introductory tale, which talks about, which asks, how important are breasts to what makes a, a woman? And compare them to, uh, in comparing that to how important is science in science fiction? And there's kind of an allusion there. Um, I read it and I was like, Okay, I, I didn't really think it was that necessary, um, and, and it put me off a little bit. I didn't really care for how the first story started either, which is called Scripter. And this story, Scripter, you basically there's this, this man who's inside a video game, like an online video game, a, a, a massive multiplayer game, um, that now is pretty much nobody plays it except supposedly for this one person. And um, there's sort of a corporate uh, um, a corporate thug, so to speak, who goes into the game and is trying to uh, convince somebody, th this one last player inside the game, to quit playing the game. Because as long as there's one player playing, they're contractually obliged to maintain the servers so yeah that's that's how it begins and it's it's a very kind of a typical um fantasy themed online game um I, and, and how it started i was like okay uh, I, I don't know i guess the writing i didn't really like at first um but then actually the story really grew on me um and i ended up liking that one at the end um for kind of the twist that it had and everything. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is if um, if you read this, you might it, it might hit you the wrong way at first, but there is good stuff to be found if you keep going. Um, the other stories, so just kind of to sum the whole book up, I actually, the shorter the story, the more I liked it in most cases, apart from that introduction which I talked about. Um, all of the stories, as the title uh, on the origin of species suggests, has have to do with 
uh, sort of the evolution of humanity, but different perspectives on that and what it means. Um, there's a story that approaches it from the perspective of time travel, which was kind of interesting. But uh, talking about more of my favorites, there's one about um, uh, the story starts by kind of seeming like it's a medieval setting, but then people are evolving at like a really advanced rate. So like servants are bending over backwards or, or not backwards, but forwards. They're like stuck bent over forwards um, from bowing so much. And evolution happens at this accelerated rate. And there's this like noble who escapes uh, a recently throned uh, tyrant um, who's hunting him down and trying to hunt down his rivals. And this, this noble who escapes is like transforming into different creatures, um, which is kind of interesting. And then um, probably my favorite story is one that you kind of, it, it's in the far future and it talks about like humans and dragons and wolves. And dragons, as they're described, so it's told in this parable fashion, but it soon dawns on you that dragons are actually like, you're not sure if they're an alien life form or if they are uh, something that came from underwater or whatever. It's left pretty ambiguous. And the more ambiguous this author leaves things, I think, the more interesting her stories are. Because in the big title, On the Origin of Species um, and then its Companion, uh, on, on the major novella inside this collection of short stories, you could call it. Um, oh, it's good orange juice. Um, it just, I just felt that it over-explained things and um, it dragged on. Um, with with Bo Young Kim's stories, I really had a hard time connecting to any of her characters, especially... Um, they just felt so distant and, um, and, and the more, and when you have to spend a ton of time with these stories, like on the origin of species, the main novella of the book is like, it's about like robots in the far future. Humanity is extinct and, um, robots in the, in the far future, like don't even know what organic life is really. They don't even consider organic matter as life. And the main kind of plot line of the story is that there's a, a, a researcher or university student um, who works with another professor to basically prove um, that organic matter is life and and then they kind of start creating life again uh, organic life but the robots themselves they consider like themselves as life and they're all produced in a factory and recycle and they live of course very long lifespans and the entire world is also, like, very cold um, at this time uh, due to, to climate change. And um, it's it's actually a really cool scenario. There were certainly parts about it I liked. I just felt that it, it all could have been more effective as a short story. Or even if it hadn't have been two stories, um, you could. I feel like you could have just combined those two stories into one. Um, that there was just a lot of unnecessary over-explaining and the character, as I do in my videos, I'm guilty of it too, but um, over-explaining and, uh, and just the characters weren't compelling enough to make me want to uh, be with them that long, I guess, because Bo Young Kim's stories are really more about the ideas than they are the characters. Um, and, and so that's why I think they're more effective, shorter, the, 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 the more effective ones are the shorter ones. My two favorites in the book were definitely Last of the Wolves and Stars Shine in Earth's Sky. Um, an evolutionary myth was good too. Again, all of the shorter ones. Um, Stars Shine in Earth's Sky was really interesting too because it's like the premise of a a girl who has a condition where she has she falls unconscious for six to eight hours a day um, writing to her younger brother and we soon realize that she's not um, she's not on earth because she's talking about a message that her planet which is in the center of the Milky Way 
has re received from the outer parts of the Milky Way saying, stars shine in Earth's sky, the title. And she's trying to figure out what does this mean, you know? Why would they send that message? Well, if you're in the center of the Milky Way, the stars all shine so bright. There's so many stars around that it's never nighttime, truly. And that's why the people there have no need for sleep. But this girl has a condition where she sleeps six to eight hours a day, um, which I guess nobody else does or few people do on that planet. So anyway, she, um, uh, writing this letter to her younger brother, supposes, well, if stars shine in Earth's sky, that means they must um, receive their light from a sun, a big object nearby. And, uh, you know, then... Um, she supposes they must have a day and a night cycle. Oh, yeah, there must be a time when the night is, when, when the sun is away from their part of the planet. So it's, uh, yeah, I don't know why that one, I enjoyed that one so much. Just viewing, again, it's really just more about the idea of being far away on a, in the center of the Milky Way. And I like astronomy. So it was just this nice, and being short, it was just this nice idea that you could consider, um, beautiful uh, sentiment of just uh, being connected with Earth and another planet across this long distance. And and um, this one message we sent out to this planet made this girl feel like she wasn't alone in her condition. And there was something really touching about that. So that was my, that, that, that might be my favorite, but I also, again, really liked the one about the um, dragons taking over the Earth and like, uh, humans are like they're have evolved to like animal furry animals that are like their pets and and um, but the wolves are like the last remaining um, humans I guess or originally were humans that um, that still resist the dragons and the dragons being again what I suppose to be like uh, some something that came from another planet and still doesn't really understand humanity. Um, they don't see like we do. and um, Yeah, some really interesting sci-fi stuff. And actually the most, there was one only one story in it that actually gave me a sense of like South Korea, which was, um, what was that one called? Um, it was the one about the time machine between zero and one. So uh, basically it's about time travel and... Uh, it's, you know, they talk about s people at time, at first it tells you that time travel couldn't exist because all these things would happen, but then the book actually ends up justifying time travel and saying, but saying, well, you can only time travel into the future and it has kind of a society type of criticism, I think, saying that people who time travel into the future forget that they have come from the past, but still carry all of their ideas of the past with them. So I think there's a sort of like critical look at society of how the values of the uh, kind of the old timers um, drag on into the future far longer than they should. There's even a reference to like, oh, Korea is unified now. North and South Korea are unified. But there are still people who talk about the North versus South and things like that. And I don't know, it was a, it was a fun, I'll have to read that one again, because I think there were um, there's also talk of a, of a girl who's uh, under huge pressure from school and to study, and I know that's a big part of the culture over there too, um, where your young life isn't for having fun, it's for, it's for studying and getting ready to be an adult, So, um, which is a different perspective than we have here uh, in the United States. But um, yeah, so there is that little bit of South Korean life in it, but of course, most of the book being science fiction and about humanity in the far future, not even humanity, other types of evolution. Um, uh, the, all, all, the, all the stories are different reflections on the evolution of species and science fiction perspectives on them. Um, so not much of overt South Korean culture in there, um, which, again, that doesn't really matter, but I guess I'm just talking about that because the list, uh, this list of reading country books from different countries, it is nice to have a book, you know, kind of give me a little bit of of what is different about that place or, or whatever. But it's not, a it's not necessary, and I don't want every book to be like this immersion into a new culture. That's definitely okay if, 
not everyone is like that. So, um, that's, I actually managed to talk about this book, I feel like, without giving any too big a spoilers. Um, I don't really feel the need to, to I, I feel like spoiling the parts that I haven't already talked about wouldn't allow me to say more about how I feel of it. Um, it's, there's a, a few stories in here that I, I definitely will remember and will read again. Um, it hasn't been my favorite book overall. I, I thought that like the longer novella within it was um, had great ideas, but just didn't need to be that long and was maybe overall one of the weaker stories. And that's just my opinion, or it just didn't do it for me. But um, yeah, so that being said, I also, since this is the 10th video, I wanted to take the last five to ten minutes of this video um, just to reflect on um, what I want this project to look like going forward and I just wrote down a few fears and goals um, that I have for the project and um, I'll start with the fears wrote them down. That's the first thing I want to talk about is notes. Actually, <clears throat> I used notes in the first two videos, but afterwards just kind of found it easier to talk about these books without them. Um, I don't know. I just kind of felt like my ideas flowed better. If I was trying to follow the notes, I think my transitions were weaker. And I kind of just decided, you know what, I don't need to talk about every single thing in the book. Just kind of let flow what I felt, and I'll get better at speaking as I go along. Um, maybe I could start doing a very rough outline, maybe if I feel it's necessary, but I really don't feel it's necessary yet. Um, but I guess if any of my viewers have ideas, if any of you have ideas about you know, what I can do to make the videos better, what, what you like, what you don't like, definitely reach out to me. Um, I'm uh, certainly always looking to get better and would like to make the viewing experience better for other people, even though that's not like the primary purpose of this project. It's more for me, I think, just to look back and to feel, well, I'll get, I'll get to that in a second, actually. I want to talk about first my fears um, for the videos. One, my reviews are too long and boring. I'm always worrying, worry about it. But then again, that's where I thought what I was just talking about. I, wh who am I doing this for? I'm mostly doing it for me, and I'm doing it for that one person that's also read this book and wants to listen to a more in-depth, somebody just talk in depth about what they felt, what they experienced with the book. Not No pretensions, no editing, you know, just kind of, this is, this is what I experienced, what I felt with this book. Um, and the other fear I have is I'm not, that I'm not familiar enough with literary reviewing or terminology to do this kind of thing. Well, everyone starts somewhere. And um, I feel that by doing these reflections every 10 books or so, I will be able to uh, get better and think about what I can do better with the videos in the future. Um, another fear is I will say offensive or inconsiderate things, especially because many of these books are dealing with like um, sensitive cultural, possibly uh, racial issues. Um, even though, you know, there's one race, the human race. Um, and yeah, I, I don't ever really intend to be controversial, but I guess if I say something like that, I don't know. It just is what it is. Um, you got to live your life. If, if, if I'm afraid of that, um, if I'm too afraid of that, then I would just never say anything. So I do try to always approach books, um, with an open mind and be culturally sensitive. So, um, that's probably not a fear that I need to think about too much. Another fear is I'm not spending enough time with the books. Um, this is one that I actually do seek to correct in the future. And the next books that I'm reading. And by time, I don't mean, maybe time is the wrong word. 
and this this transitions directly into my first goal. I have two goals going forward: to read without looking ahead, because I often find myself um, looking at like how much left do I have to go in the book. Um, so I can slow down, um, and or 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 how much left I have to go in a chapter. That's pretty frequent, especially if I'm reading on a time crunch, um, which does happen sometimes. Um, but I don't want to have to read in those scenarios. Just to just to relax, get myself in the book, immerse myself fully in the book. That's what I want to be conscious of when I have that urge to look. Oh, how much is left in this chapter? So I can look at my phone again, or or um, you know, go eat something or whatever. Try to not do that. And when I get to the end of a chapter, um, to write my thoughts. So write my thoughts at the end of each um, reading session, actually, was my second goal. And to break the books down a little bit more, part by part, be more aware of how I'm reacting to the book as I go through it, and who I like and what I'm doing. And I think doing that will really strengthen um, these reviews. Um, so those are my two goals. And, um, again, every 10 books, I plan to have a little section like this at the end of the video where I talk about what I want to do going forward. Um, 10 just seems like a good number. So why videos is the final thing I wanted to talk about. Um, if I'm not planning to edit them or do anything about sound quality or follow notes, I guess, again, as I was saying, it um, it's my way of engaging with the digital world to connect what I'm doing with others. If I just wrote reviews, I don't think other people would spend would spend the time to read them. I don't know. It's a busy world. It's a high tech world. Um, and it's nice to be heard, you know, like literally heard. Even if each video connects with only one other person that reads these books. Uh, and, 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 you know, if, if a person enjoys one of my videos, I certainly don't expect they're going to watch a me talk about a bunch of books they've never read so it's kind of just i'm just trying to create these videos that will always be there for somebody who's read one of these books to um hear somebody who's read them and and even if two years in the three five ten years in the future someone finds these videos and you want to uh write on here you know write a comment or whatever i will be there to respond with my thoughts um and finally um, I think there is no escaping this digitalization of the world and part of this um, diving into all these books, expanding my literature, um, I really do now, at first I wasn't sure if I was going to try to read a book from every single country in the world, but I really want to. I just feel at some point there's going to be a lot of these smaller countries or like countries where I'm only able to find one book. And maybe some of them aren't going to be that interesting to me, but I do plan to take this as far as it can be taken. And I'm even now running into countries where I really want to read two books um, because I know of another book I really want to read. And that happened with the, with the next book I'm going to review already, where I had picked, I had bought a book that I was like, yeah, I'm going to read this one for that country. But then I found another book that's like a classic and it looked so good, and it had such high reviews, and it's just one that, like, I I felt like, yeah, it, 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 I really felt like it was calling to me, so I switched out uh, Turkey is the country, um, so I gave it away, whoops, but yeah, that'll be next video anyway, so, um, but again, I'm slowing down. If I only get one video out a week, that's my goal. If it's eight days, nine days, if it's two weeks, if I need to take a break, it doesn't matter. Um, but I really do want to try to do one a week just to keep up the, the flow. And, um, and, if I, and if Turkey doesn't end up being next because I haven't finished the book, then whatever. But it is what it is. So, yeah, I've rambled enough. Um, that's just my reflection, I guess. And wanted to share my thoughts with the channel, um, anybody watching, so that uh, you can comment or, or give thoughts if you choose or not. Or just for me to kind of say it and move on. So yeah, that's it. Uh, hope anyone watching has a wonderful day. Uh, thank you to the new subscriber, whoever that was. We're up to 27 now, which is really great. It's really great. Uh, so 
Have a great day, everybody.